Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Friday, August 16th, 2024. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of looking forward to a weekend. It's been a wild and crazy week. The volatility has been um, high. Big push to the upside here with a massive gap yesterday on data. What happens from here? Well, how about we take a look at what happened overnight first and then we'll get into the charts. First off, if we take a look at Asia markets, Asia markets surged huge last night up across the board. The Nikkei up 3.64% or up 1.1,000, um, 336 points overnight. Um, the Shanghai um, uh, was up only 0.7%, but Hong Kong rip into the upside up 1.88% or $321. So big strong moves over there in the Asian markets. If we take a look at European markets this morning, we have a little bit of a mix, however. The DAX is up nicely, up 0.62% um, or $113. Um, but the FTSE is down 0.44%, 36.92 lower here this morning. The CAC this morning is also showing just a little bit of modest green up 0.22% or $16.27. Um, um, so a little bit of mix going on there in European markets. If we take a look at U.S. markets, interesting enough, we were bullish most of the night, but now we've got just a little bit of bearishness coming in to uh, futures. And I'm guessing it's just kind of an overbought um, concern at the moment here today because we really don't have a whole lot of data to go on today. So starting with a little bit of a tiny pullback, maybe. If we take a look at what's going on in oil this morning, boy, oil is really pushing up. If we look or pushing down, um, we had a big day in oil yesterday, but boy, it's coming down hard uh, this morning. Oil futures uh, down $1.79 or at $76.37 a barrel. Brent is down $1.55 at seventy nine forty nine a barrel. So back under that critical 80. And we're seeing natural gas um, pushing just a ever so slightly higher, about a penny, a uh, penny and a half in that after selling off yesterday. So quite an interesting change here on the day. If we take a look at uh, gold, and precious metals gold is higher this morning right now gold futures up by eleven dollars an ounce we have however silver copper platinum and palladium just modestly lower but that gld looking pretty good this morning in the pre-market trying to pop up so keep an eye on that uh, pretty interesting um pretty interesting um chart there where we're trying to push back up toward those record highs in gold. If we take a look at cryptos this morning, boy, a lot of volatility there as well with this flip-flopping that we've been seeing here in the market. Uh, Bitcoin was down about $1,700 a coin yesterday. Um, right now it's up $1,300 a coin this morning, ripping to the upside. So very volatile here and we're green across the board um, uh, in those cryptos this morning so keep an eye on that if we were to take a look at bonds this morning interestingly enough bonds are pulling back just a tiny little bit from where they were yesterday they soared up yesterday could be and you do want to consider this very carefully um, the numbers that we got yesterday would suggest our economy is doing just fine and that pushed those bonds right back up. You know, we had worries that the higher rates were pushing uh, consumers down and, and pushing um, um, people out of jobs and that kind of thing. The numbers yesterday suggested that's not true. So bond yields went back up because 
there would be a suggestion here that maybe there's no need for a rate cut if the economy's great and everything's cook cooking along just fine then why would they cut rates because their two mandates of course are jobs and inflation and we're seeing inflation come down and jobs are holding strong um, they're still nowhere near their target so maybe there's no need in the fed funds futures that were really suggesting a 50 basis point cut in september now only suggesting a quarter basis point cut and we still got a long ways to go before we get to that september meeting so kind of keep that in mind but our two-year bonds this morning at 4.05 percent uh pulling back from yesterday's high 10-year bonds also pulling back from yesterday's high at 3.88 percent and the 30-year bonds pulling back just ever so slightly to 4.14 percent um, interesting enough that the short-term bonds are continuing to hold up at 5.20 percent on the three months so interesting moves here in the market with these um, whipsaws and uh, back and forth here in the market um, we're going to have to keep a pretty close eye on that and just remember the volatility although the VIX has come down volatility in prices are, is still relatively high let's take a look at um, these stocks and see if we can figure out how we uh, might want to approach the market for today but how about we settle in let's buckle up let's get ready for the Friday edition of the morning market prep video Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very, very much appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts. Remember, when we look at them, we want to shake off that bias. We want to look at them for what they are, not for what we want them to be. Well, one thing for sure, what happened yesterday, we left behind a massive gap here in the chart, just a huge gap underneath um, that move. And in that rally up, we came straight up here and we tested this um, uh, trend to see if we could break back through ended up closing above that trend in that break and we're coming back up to some resistance here in the chart I'm gonna swing this all the way back you can see we've got huge um, uh, breakout up here possible if we can break through these highs so pushing up here I pulled a line up into here just to look at some of these um, that big old black candle there and across right here we've got a little bit of touches in here so that would be my next resistance in the chart for the bulls if they can push on through there and if they can get through that then i would suggest we're going to move right on up and we're going to test this area of the chart and then uh, of course as you can see beyond that we start pushing up to all-time highs here in the diamonds now this has been quite a stretch to the upside so one of the things you do have to consider with such a big move to the upside that a pullback could be coming at any time and honestly it would be much healthier for the market to rest or consolidate right now than to just to zoom back up we do want to remember that as we look through here there is actually a little downtrend right there and if we were to find a failure here in the chart no one would be surprised if you look back on this chart um, uh, weeks from now or even months from now oh yeah that would be a logical place for a pullback to occur it doesn't mean collapse just a pullback or a consolidation so let's take a look here if we were to push back in here notice we've got yesterday's candle in here that we could use as a little bit of price support if that doesn't hold maybe that tail down here yesterday's low might hold if that doesn't hold well we've got that possibility we could come back in here and fill that gap so watch carefully for that now beyond that point the market's going to get really concerned if we start breaking down below there it's going to raise that fear back in the market for that possible lower high in here that has the potential of either either making a lower high or a lower um, um, a double bottom and that's very common in the market we see this over here on the diamonds where we surge up and then we come back and we do the same thing over here we surge up and then we come back this isn't a mat a massive surge 
back to the upside. So the pullback in here, if we were to come all the way back in there, would be quite painful. So a little bit of resting consolidation would be the healthiest thing for the market. We'll see what we get. I rarely get what I really want here in the market. Now we're well above our 50 day moving average. Um, actually so steeply above the 50 day moving average, we also have to consider the possibility of a pullback. If we take a look at our SPY, SPY shot up here, broke through this downtrend, just zipped through it like it wasn't even there, leaving a big gap behind. And we're up here testing this next area of resistance, that last high where we failed. So the big question here for today is, will we have the energy to push through that resistance in the chart? And if we can, we start coming up here, testing some of these levels in the chart, and then that possibility that we could push right on up here and be seeking all-time highs here. Watch carefully for that. If the bears were to find inspiration today, well, it's pretty easy to see where we might go on this one as well. Pushing back down here to the bottom of that candle would be logical. And then if we were to slip beyond that, I'm going to suggest there's a little bit of price support right there in the middle of all of this price action. And then we would come back down, maybe filling this gap here in the chart. So keep an eye on that. Now breaking down below here and maybe giving up this upside tre uh, trend break, well, that would probably raise some fear in the market. And the reason it would is we would be failing that 50 day moving average here in the chart. Remember, it's one thing to zoom and cross over up. It's another thing to actually hold it and show that the bolt excuse me, the bulls holding in there on that support, and then we have something to build off of. Um, we have a potential here of a big whipsaw if the bears find some reason to engage. I'm not saying they will, but something that we should be paying attention to. If we take a look at our QQQ, also very bullish, big gapping move, really strong. A lot of corporate buybacks happening here right now in the big tech giants. And it seems to be dragging some money out of out of the IWM here again um, as we uh, get very centric again on those tech giants. So looking here, um, pushed right up into this resistance here in the chart, jamming right on through. We've got that double top type um, uh, situation here as well. But if we can push right on through here, break through that resistance, I'm going to suggest coming up into here. And if we can get through there, we're going to be right back up here at that fairly um, substantial resistance in the chart. So we've got a lot more work here in the QQQ to do. And you'll also see that, well, what we've done is we've just barely broke through that 50 day moving average and a test here would be pretty um, interesting. Notice all of our short term moving averages cross down through. So the pressure to rest, consolidate or pull back would seem to be pretty high here, but We'll see. Um, um, Fridays have tended to be a pretty darn bullish day and um, we're willing to chase in this market like I have not ever seen since 1999. Uh, doesn't matter what the price is, just hurry up and buy something and chase it. So yeah, be careful here. If we take a look at IWM, IWM got the benefit of that big boost yesterday and we did bump through this major resistance that goes back through 2021 and 2022. Now the question is, will we continue to have that energy and as we see some of these tech giants rallying back up yet i believe it has been pulling some of the enthusiasm here out of iwm so watch carefully but if the bulls can continue to find that energy well let's start looking right up here and we can see those resistance levels in the chart and where they are and we'll see if we can push right on up through there and if we can i would suggest pushing up through these levels, we'd be right back up here testing this resistance in the chart. If the bears, however, find inspiration, well, we can see that too, push back down, maybe test the low side of that candle and the tail of that candle and back down here to this really important area for us to try to hold as support in IWM. A breakdown below there would probably be a little bit concerning. We still have this upside trend that we could grab a hold of. So keep an eye on that. Slipping beyond that, well, that's when it gets pretty ugly. Watch carefully there on the Russell. If we take a look at our VIX, 
or VIX, a nice pullback here. We're pulling this back as if there is no reason for concern here in the market at all. I'm not sure that's the case with some of the numbers that we've been seeing, but right now we are very comfortable in just zooming back up. Now, one thing I would say is such a massive collapse here in the VIX would suggest the possibility that any time we could lift this back up just a little bit, doesn't mean that we really have a major pullback in the market, but a nice little resting consolidation would be good. But if those bulls continue to find that inspiration, pushing right on back down here, we start coming back down into these complacency areas of the market. Looks like certainly a possibility to, to occur very, very easily. If the bears were to find inspiration, well, I'd suggest maybe pushing back up. Remember that blue line in there is that big, long downtrend break. So we just cracked below that yesterday. A push back in here to retest that as resistance would be um, an interesting thing if the um, bears were to be inspired. And if they follow on through with that, well, man, we might push right on up and see if we can test the underneath side of that rally to the upside. Keep an eye on that. That certainly is a possibility in here, pushing back through and, and coming up here a bit in the chart for just a little bit of resting consolidation in the market. Now, if we take a look at our T2122, well, our T2122, as I suggested yesterday, was likely going to be up there in the uh, bearish reversal zone. And we did push up all the way, almost to the top, first thing yesterday morning. <clears throat> Ended up pulling back here just a little bit. Um, and I'll show you why, but as um, pulling uh, pulling this back into here does give us that opportunity. If we can find bullish inspiration here today, we could certainly um, push this on up and kind of finish up this move where we just hit these extremes in the market. And I want to point something out. I did an e-learning yesterday about market condition and something I think it's kind of important. T2122. If you look at this chart, there's never been a time, there will never be a time where we can push through 100 here. Um, and every time we push up into this area, we are at the top side of the market, okay? Which means that we need a rest or consolidation at a minimum. Just, just a consolidation um, is what we need to ease this off and relax um, this kind of this extension to the upside. So one of the things that you want to be thinking about is when we're up here is we want to be a position seller. We want to be taking profits, those kind of things, particularly if you're a swing trader, be taking profits on those swings because as we reach up here, we inevitably pull back. Now we can linger up here for a while. We can linger, we can continue to extend um, and linger up here. But remember, we're up here at the top side of this move and a pullback should not be a surprise at all. So kind of be prepared for that. If the bears find inspiration, well, you can certainly see that they've opened up a big opportunity for them um, for that inspiration. Um, let's take a look at our um, T2108. Now our T2108, the four, I mean, uh, the um, percentage of stocks above the 40 day, really nice move yesterday, uh, surging up strongly. We did get back above 50%. And that's a key thing here. Psychologically, that's a key thing. Getting at least half the stocks back above their 40 day moving average um, is psychologically important for the market because we get that that relief um, here, um, but we do have to also consider how much we've extended um, in that move to make that happen. If the bulls can continue to find inspiration, I sure, certainly didn't draw that line very straight. Um, if the bulls can continue to find inspiration, well, we can see we've got some resistance levels up here that we could still move up and test pretty easily. So every reason to believe the bulls are definitely in control here. So every reason to believe if they find something to inspire them that we could push on higher here in this today. Um, Fridays have tended to be oh, that real big bullish day. And if we pull back, I don't think I would panic about that because pulling back in here, you can see we've got some good levels a price support, just a little relief um, from this upside extension. 
um, could pull us back. And then um, as long as we hold support levels, we could be in really good shape for an upside move. And then if we look at the T2107, T2107, the same, back above that 50% here, pushing up nicely, about 55%, honestly, in uh, the percentage of stocks back above the 200. That raises that encouragement level here in the market quite a bit. You will want to notice we're going to be running into some fairly big areas of congestion and price resistance, so perhaps we can push on higher. But if we pull back, once again, we've got some really good support levels in here. So um, resting consolidation shouldn't be any kind of a major fear either in the market. And a hold of support, hey, that gives us great upside opportunity. And then if we look at our uh, T2101, well, one of the things that um, we've been seeing is T2101 did show us a tiny little increase in breadth. And I think where that breadth is coming from is in the corporate buybacks. Um, they're really starting to push um, in some of those corporate buybacks, trying to move things a little bit higher. But watch that closely because honestly, we really should have seen a little bit more energy in that yesterday. And, I, and I'm guessing we could see that breadth decline here just a little bit today. So be kind of careful if we make a lower high in the breadth. Um, we're running, maybe running out of that bullish energy here to the upside, just for a temporary um, little rest. If we take a look at our economic calendar here for today, well, our economic calendar, boy, we got through a whole lot this week, but we've still got a little bit um, here to pay attention to this morning. Probably not major market movers, um, but you, you, know, you never know. Um, housing uh, starts and permits, they're looking for the housing starts to decline um, ever so slightly and our permits to decline as well. So keep an eye on that. And that would be pretty normal in a market that's showing a bit of restriction from higher rates. If we take a look after that, we've got a consumer sentiment number coming in and consensus is suggesting that consumer sentiment moves up to 67. That's still a very low um, sentiment number, but an improvement of what we have seen if we can reach up into there. And then if we take a look, we've got a Baker Hughes and we've got Goolsby talking here today, and that'll wind up our week. On the earnings front, we have very little inspiration here today, and we're running out of those major inspiration points on the earnings calendar. Um, and moving through those earnings pretty quickly here this quarter. Um, the ones that I have here this morning to pay attention to would be Flower Foods. Um, that's reporting here this morning. And CINT, which uh, somewhat notable maybe here for today. Um, and, and that's really it. Um, for the notables for the whole day. So these two will be reporting this morning and, and that's pretty much the size of it. So how about we take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, well, you know the, you know the rigmarole. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you can please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up every time um, I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, click that uh, thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who takes the time to do that. I appreciate it. I apologize I missed answering those yesterday, but I will be back on task here this morning. Um, I, it's, it really is important to me, and, and, and I truly, truly appreciate all the kindness you guys show me in those, um, in those comments. You're truly the best. Couldn't. I, I call everybody my friend because I really feel that way. You, um, you are all very friendly, and I truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at um, some of these stocks setting up. Remember, everyone, these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. Um, you've got to do your own due diligence. Um, make sure you're following your trading rules and your guidelines, and never ever blindly follow anyone else's 
trade ideas. You know, one of the things that we're going to be challenged with in a lot of these stocks um, right now is just the big giant moves that we had yesterday, the big extensions and gaps left behind, which adds risk to any stop loss and any trade. So I'm going to show you some stocks that may not have quite so much risk in them. Um, but um, there are a lot of things that moved to the upside yesterday in in really big moves. Take a look at uh, Mickey D's here. Now I've been watching Mickey D's and it did extend out nicely yesterday, pushing into that upside trend. Remember, it's kind of a remarkable. Uh, McDonald's actually guided lower for next quarter, but every day since um, their earnings report has been a reason to buy it. So um, uh, any kind of little consolidation or rest in here um, might give us that next opportunity for that to push on through to the upside. Take a look at Mickey D's. I'm going to say the same for Home Depot. Home Depot came in with a pretty ugly report and they guided lower and it's been a buy every ever since. Um, they're suggesting three to four percent decrease in sales going into next quarter and the market goes don't care we want to buy a home depot so keep an eye on this as we stretch up now we may run into some oh darn thing changed the drawing tool for me just a second um we may um as we run into um that resistance catch a little rest or consolidation in the chart but if we do you'll notice that that could create the higher low that would pop us right on through. If we can break on through here and then rest back and hold that trend, I would still look for that opportunity in here on Home Depot. You'll notice we're moving up in this upside trend. No fear, no worries here on Home Depot despite their guidance. So um, definitely worth keeping an eye on. Um, I continue to go back to these defensive sectors. I know they're not moving much, but they're not whipsawing either. And you can see this nice bullish pattern continuing to hold up here in Coca-Cola. We can see that in quite a few of these defensive sector stocks. Um, PepsiCo holding in a bullish pattern. We can see that in um, Hershey. Um, now Hershey did break down here. I apologize, I forgot. We had this breakdown in here. Um, so that one comes off the list, but quite a few of those defensive sector stocks. And then what we saw yesterday, retail, holy cow, um, anything retail. Um, moved huge. Walmart, massive move up. What this needs now is some kind of a rest or pullback consolidation. If you're in this, congratulations. I, I would be selling some covered calls on it if I wanted to hold it. But any kind of rest or consolidation in here um, could set up the next opportunity to the upside. We saw some big changes in some of the discount retailers, even though they're still underneath their downtrend, they caught some of that halo effect from um, Walmart. So uh, if they can come up off of these bottoms, maybe this would be way too early to do anything for me, but something to pay attention to. Target, Target also had a nice little move um, in that halo effect from um, Walmart. So watch that carefully making that gap up. And we still got a lot of work here to do to get up out of that downtrend. But perhaps if the consumers are as strong as those numbers would suggest, these um, these have some big upside potential in them. So keep an eye on that. Even stocks like Macy's that have just been horribly down, um, getting a nice pop up. So any rest consolidation that holds a higher low, I would be looking for those opportunities uh, potentially in those stocks. Um, when we take a look at the uh, financial sector, my goodness, the financial sector had a good day yesterday, pushing up strongly here in the chart. We're coming right back up here. We had sliced down through that 50 like it wasn't even there. And we sliced back up through there like it wasn't even there. Big whipsaw in these charts. And here we are coming right back up here to these tops. Now the question is, is this going to end up being like a triple crown top? Um, or are we going to this time be able to kind of calm down and rest, pull back and consolidate, 
hold that higher low and then get a logical move that could maybe come up here and challenge or push through. Um, we're in such an all or nothing market. It's so difficult to trade this and because of the whipsaws here in the market. Um, overnight, things change and we get these big moves. We need some calming in this market. Um, otherwise, this is, is still a very dangerous chart to trade unless we get some rest in here. Now, if we take a look at things like BAC, BAC has rallied back and it's rallied back into this resistance here in the chart. It did break back above that downtrend here in BAC, but I gotta tell you, BAC underneath its 50 here, this looks like a failure pattern setting up and a possible short. Um, I'm going to say the same for Citibank. Say the same for WFC. So those big financials are enjoying um, this run to the upside with very few of them actually showing lots of bullishness. Um, one that I would be paying attention to for bullishness here would be Goldman Sachs, uh, JP Morgan. Those would be ones to be paying attention to if we look at stocks like Morgan Stanley breaking back above its 50 day. If that could rest, consolidate and hold above that 50 day, then I would look for some potential upside in that chart as well. I just realized that I'm already over 30 minutes here, so I'm running this video long. I guess I'm going to cut this off right here. I want to wish you guys all of the best today. Have a great, uh, profitable day, and have a wonderful weekend. And as always, I wish you all the very best, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Take care. Everybody.